Hello, and thank you for being here this evening for the making of A Boy Named Isamu, a conversation with James Yang. My name is Lindsay Compton, and I'm the Marketing and Business Development Manager at the Society of Illustrators. Before we get started, I'd just like to take a moment to let you know that the Society of Illustrators is open, and if you're in the New York City area, we welcome you to make a visit. So we're so happy to have this opportunity to share with you James Yang's newest children's book, A Boy Named Isamu, a story of Isamu Noguchi, published by Viking Children's Books. Here with us tonight is Tracy J. Gates, the editor of this book and many more at Viking Children's Books. Over the years, she's been fortunate to create books with Anna Dudney, David Koval, Gianna Moreno, and many, many wonderful others. Jim Hoover, here with us, is an art director at Viking Children's Books, the art director of this book, and Jim has been publishing for over 20 years. He speaks regularly at CB, sorry, SCBWI and has designed and art directed hundreds of books ranging from picture books, nonfiction to middle grade, including James Ying's Geisel award-winning Stop Bot. And of course, illustrator and author James Yang has won over 250 awards for design and illustration, <laughs> including Best of Show from 3x3 Magazine. He has taught and lectured at a variety of institutions, including SBA, Parsons, FIT, SCAD, and was an executive board member for ICON. His book, Bus Stop, was selected as an outstanding picture book by the New York Times, and the follow-up, Stop Bot, is the 2020 Giesel Award winner for the most distinguished American book, for beginning readers. His latest book and the topic of tonight's discussion, A Boy Named Isamu, has been called by Kirkus Review, a marvel of prose, illustration, and design. So James, please get started. Thank you. Hey guys, uh, thanks a lot for coming. And uh, I, I guess I agree we should start, maybe we should just start reading the book now and then we can get into it. Does that sound like a good idea? Great. So I'll go ahead and do a quick reading of the book, A Boy Named Isamu by me, edited by Tracy and art directed by uh, Jim Hoover. So, so um, Jim, I remember like, we just wanted to give everybody uh, a look at it right now. So I, I guess we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna sort of rewind back, right guys? And sort of talk about how it got started. You know, I just wanna interject though, James, just um, listening to you read it, I realized, I think that was the first time <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say that I actually heard you read the whole thing aloud. I mean, oh, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I just like, I just kind of got emotional hear, hearing it from you. Um, oh man! And anyway, but that was my reaction. So, um, and I've looked at these words many, many times, as you know. <laughs> and I'll just add that if you want to read the author's note, you can buy the book. Yes. <laughs> hey, they're gonna they're gonna want to read read this again. I think so. Yeah, because the author notes are, you know, they're heartfelt, and I do settle a lot of scores. No, I'm kidding. It's a very. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I hope you scared me when you told me to write author's notes. I, I remember when you told me to write that. Remember, Tracy? Uh, yeah, and. I did. I feel like we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> we did have a little bit of agenda for this. Um, so I, I think the the first question that we we wanted to, or the first thing that we wanted to address was like how this book even came to be. And uh, full disclosure, we all got together a little ahead of this today and talked about it because I honestly said to that to you guys, I said, uh, I don't really remember when this um, came to be because it was actually before I got involved. So. Jim or James, you want to you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, I, I brought it. Did I bring it to you first, Jim? Is that how it happened, or was it in a meeting where we were all together working on Stop Bot, the uh, guys' award-winning Stop Bot? Yeah. <laughs> no. um, we we met at uh, SBWI on stage giving uh, a talk, a little a little bit like this, and we just got to chatting afterward and said, hey. I do children's books, and I said, "Cool." And I, uh, and I remember I really liked your your puzzle bed, your uh, that that book, and I was like, "Ooh." And uh, that that Monday, I went into to Tracy and said, "Look at look at this book, isn't it neat?" And we um, made a, a meeting shortly thereafter, and I'm pretty sure 
you showed us some early pieces for this book. This was 2015, right? So it, it was five plus years ago that, that but, but we were like, ooh. Do, do you, you know, actually, uh... James, do you do you? We didn't get so organized. You do you have those pieces I actually, that you uh, can share? Yeah, let me let, let me uh, get a screen share here and let me show you those first three pieces. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it's always interesting what what um, like what kind of gets the attention. I think of of an art director and a um, and an editor. You know, it's funny. I don't even remember that one. <laughs> I really, yeah, I'm looking it, at it, it too, thinking. Did was I not this, show you that? Was this? You, uh, yes. That's the, uh, the, that's one of the ones I remember. Yeah. And if you notice, like this is back during my giant head era too. Like mm -hmm. I like to draw giant heads. That was a thing back then. So. Mm -hmm. and, um, I know this is probably a little bit of like a passion project, and somebody's asking how you came up with the original concept for the book. Well, you know, um, part of part of it was I was. Uh, kind of approached by another institution that doesn't do children's books about possibly collaborating on an Asami Noguchi project. And I was like, and he's always been a hero of mine. And I was like, that's true. So a little switch went off. Like I've always wanted to do a Asami Noguchi book because I, as aesthetically, I agree with, I, I connect with him. And of course he was like one of the few Asian Americans that I saw as a kid or student breaking through in the art world in the US. And, um, Frankly, it was when we started on that project with the other group, it was just a thing where it was a great idea for a project, but a, not a good mix of what they needed, which was very valid and, and probably the way I saw some. And I just had this weird switch in my head, like I want to do something more poetic. They needed a more practical book, you know, and a much more literal book, which so I was literally the wrong artist for this. But then after we sort of agreed to part ways creatively, um, I just started uh, coming up with ideas like, you know what? I feel like this is a book that I could do well. And it's something that, it, it was a weird thing where I, I knew I wanted to do it even without knowing that I've been wanting to do it my whole life. And, and I, this might be the wrong time to bring it in, but actually Jim men, mentioned my book, Puzzle Head. In a weird way, if you think about it, Puzzle Head is kind of like a test run before a boy named Asami. Yeah, I can see that. And yeah. have you done these pieces for that publisher before? Uh, like no, no, you know, it was, I was sort of taken in a different direction. And then I was like, ah. and frankly, I was just a bad match. It was just a bad match on my part too, you know, not for what they wanted. And I was like, you know what, let me just do it the way that I want to without any rules. Let me just do some test things here, how I really want to do it and how I imagine an Islamic book if I were to do one. And then I think these are the three that you saw, right? Uh, yes, I remember this one. So I think this is the image, probably one of the first images I came up with. And ironically, um, I, you know, I grew up in Oklahoma, as you guys know, I'm a redneck. And one of the images, and one of the things that stuck with me, so I used to stand in, in, in like uh, fields of wheat and you'd hear the wind blow and the wheat crashing against each other. So uh, I'm starting, without even knowing, I'm starting to get a connection, like maybe there's something to Isamu's story and even my story that may intersect. So I just want to ask uh, James, because I'm looking at this and um, many years later, actually, and of course, I'm remembering it now. And, you know, the, uh, this, all three images, but, and the, the yeah. rock and the sea image as well. I remember just, oh, and, and this one, of course, um, I just thought that we both, Jim and I both thought they were so powerful. But what it's interesting to me now looking at them, I'm thinking, um, what what exactly inspired you to do these images? Because you hadn't written anything yet, had you? No, no. It was just like uh, the thought was, how does how would Isamu as a little boy interact with nature? Mm, interesting. You know, and also, you know, I, I I grew up in a time with a lot of golden ages of books. You know, so I I'm reading where the wild things are. Um, there's that great children's book, The Other Side of the Mountain, you know, where the boy like sort of hollows out a little place in a tree and lives there for a whole period of time in the woods. Uh, so there's a lot of, I, I think that some of these images were just sort of like my, I'm a big Leo Leone fan, Frederick the Mouse. And already I saw the connection like with the rocks, it's very mid-century, you know, and then I did do some research uh, 
forgive me if I get the title on, but there's a, there's the ultimate Isama Noguchi book, uh, Listening to Stone. So and this is just very literal, <laughs> you, you, you know, because as you guys know, I'm a super deep guy. So, yeah. <laughs> Are we laughing? No, we're not laughing. <laughs> we're kind of laughing, yeah. <laughs> But I remember the early meeting you came in just to kind of, you know, pitch and talk about what we might work on together. And this was something we were like, yo, that's, that's great. If this doesn't work out with, you know, the other publisher, let us know. And then, yeah, you I, mm -hmm. yeah, I think at the same right we, when we saw these pieces we we just knew that like oh we really wanted this but it was i think at the time it was still a little tied up with uh you know with this other organization um, yeah. but you know so so uh, interestingly enough i mean when jim and i were talking about this earlier he said you know if we'd done this book when james um brought it in and written it all like when he first came to us and we really didn't know him that well yet it would be a very different book um but we have had we had two other books we worked on two other books in the meantime before we finally we, we before we started work on this one I think at the end like mid 2018 or really it really wasn't until 2019 that we got into it and and I think um I'll just like so we worked on um bus stop and stop bot which are i don't think these are mirrored images so they look weird but no, no, no. anyway they look fine okay i can't tell on mine it, they look strange but anyway so these were the two books that we worked on first um and we got to know each other pretty pretty well because um uh, because James lives in Brooklyn and um, he works by himself all day. So he likes to hang out occasionally. So we had the pleasure of him coming in um, every so often and, and having a good working lunch <laughs> um, occasionally. So we really got to, the three of us got to know each other pretty well. And so we had a, we just had a good rapport about the time we started working on uh, Isamu. I feel like there's a lot of trust between all three of us, which I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. you know, and respect, and, yes. You, you know, I still remember like the first time we did a bus stop, you would ask me about the color. Cause I'd say like, how are you gonna color the pages? Cause it's the same scene. I go, oh, I'm gonna do different colors for each page. And I was thinking more of just color flows. And then you sat there quiet for a moment without saying anything, I was freaking out. And then, and then Jim goes, don't worry, Tracy always, she's not, She's, that's just how he thinks. She just has to go and pause for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then, and, and then you mentioned like, well, you know, you can make it from morning to night, and it seems like an obvious note, but I didn't think of it. And I do oh. remember thinking like, oh my god, like that's why Tracy gets paid the big bucks. I totally <laughs> trust her. <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all like doing this, but anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But but not you know, I, I definitely. I don't know how you feel, Jim, but I always felt like we always had like just three of us together have a very good, yeah, our hive mind works very well together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a great collaboration. This, this, this is how I want all my picture books to go, the way we work together. Just yeah. So let's get into the nitty gritty a little, guys. Um, sure. Because uh, <laughs> we sure. can go on about how much we can yeah, get right. along um, in the old time, but uh, which we do, and we're fortunate that way. But um, so we had, I remember getting in 2018 um, uh, an email from uh, James's agent, David Goldman, who maybe is here today. Who knows? Hi, David. Um, <laughs> um, and he, I think we were just finishing up Stopbot, if I'm getting that right or not. And he's like, nudge, nudge, um, you know, we're doing, we're on a roll here, you know, maybe we should get to the, back to that Gucci book. And, uh, and I think I even put in an email, I'm like, well, if he had a story for it, we'd, <laughs> we'd do it next. But I don't think there were, I don't what, think was that a problem? <laughs> There was no text yet. There were these amazing, amazing images that we just absolutely loved. That was so powerful, but no story. So, what came next, guys? The, um, since that's 2000, I, you know what? I, I think I did write a pitch, and let me just show you the quick script because you did ask for a pitch. Well, you know, like the uh, yeah, I pitch. probably did because I hadn't signed it up yet. You know, and also with these beautiful images, 
but like, and we knew it could be, I think all three of us knew it could be a really special book. Yeah. But we just had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we had something, we, we just didn't have any words. So yeah, no, she, do you do you have the, um, yeah, 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 do you yeah, have that me, pitch? Let, let, yeah, let me share the screen. I can just read it for every, just show it to everybody else here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Again. somebody in the audience is asking, um, as an illustrator, how do you get started with writing? You, you know what, like, um, I would say, especially with my earlier books, and Jim and Tracy will vouch for me that I, I think of the story pictorially first, you, you know, and I write it up pictorially. And, and um, especially my earlier books, the words came secondary. And usually I'm, I'm just baiting Tracy into writing it for me, <laughs> you know, or I'll be like, boy at bus stop, it, you know, and I write it very, I, I write it very outlined, but I've, it, we'll talk about this, but I became more confident in writing and Tracy helped push me, but I've heard this as normal with a lot of illustrators who do both. You start, the Psalm was the first book that I took to writing as seriously as the artwork, I feel like, it, you know, and part of it was just because I learned how to write better from doing a couple books. Um, and if you look and, here, go on. Well, I was just gonna say you, something that you mentioned at, well, that we've talked about, James, is that, you know, so James is, I, I read his writing all the time on Facebook and he makes me laugh all the time. So I'd seen him writing very, very short, <laughs> um, but he also had written, I remember, I think it was 2018, um, he, he, you know, works for all of these uh, magazines and, and um, including Golf Digest. And um, he did this piece for Golf Digest. Was it in 2018? Yes, um, yeah. James, yeah. Um, and it and it was um, it was illustrations, but it was also I think they asked you to write um, a story to go yes. with the illustrations, and um, I ended up um, I think that's a story in itself, um, but I ended up. Um, reading it and thinking this is so great he can write after all I know he can so I think I came after you and said okay you can't <laughs> can't tell me you can't write anymore because now it's a, you know the secret's out well you know and, then, and honestly that helped a lot too like having you say that uh, you think I'm a good rock you know I mean it helped a lot and, and I'm gonna you, you, you know um, it was Ken DeLago at, at uh, Golf Digest he had confidence that I could write and that meant a lot. And then having you also say I could write, even though I'm a full grown man, <laughs> full grown man, baby. Um, that gave me a lot of, that helped me think like, oh, maybe I am a writer. You know, I, I thought of myself more like, well, I'm a picture guy, like writing, <laughs> that's, a, that's for the big boys, you know, but you gave me a lot of confidence. And this is actually the pitch. This is actually the pitch that I gave you guys. It's on the screen, do you guys see it? And, and it's, I'll just read it out loud. It's a story about a mixed race child who goes to play one day. One group of kids do not want to play with him, so he goes to try another group who also does not want to play. He then takes a journey to explore nature. He makes a tiny rock sculpture among rocks, plays with tall grass, feathers from birds which fly and stick, which fly and sticks when, it, when he's in a forest. In each spot, he makes a toy inspired by nature, which he puts into his bag. At the end of the day, he goes home for dinner, Mom asks how his day is, how his day went. And he says it was fine in spite of the disappointment of the morning. As he goes to bed, he takes the toys out of his backpack to surround his bed. The final page is a garden with giant toys which have grown while he sleeps. The story is about solitude, being different, and inspiration. I, I will say, illustrators, there, there is a little bit of an advantage that you have in that if the editor, if a publisher likes your illustrations, they might be more willing to bring you on and, and help you writing. Whereas a writer who wants to illustrate, it does, they, they would hit more turbulence, you know? So um, part of it is just getting in there, right, James, and just starting to pace out, you know, find that thread of the, the story. And, you know, like, like you said, I think getting the visuals in line first can really help. I, I did, and I like, you know, as Mrs. Yang will tell you, I like to watch a lot of TV and movies, but, now I can like say it's research because you know you learn about visual pacing, you know all those different elements where there's has to be beats. So I didn't know how, how to do it verbally at the time, but visually. And I see a question here where somebody asked me like, how was I able to keep the biography so simple, mm -hmm. you know, but work 
And um, did, did you give me notes on that, Tracy? I'm sure you gave me notes about the writing, right? Like, because really the writing part comes kind of second. Well, the, the so it sounds like the question was that how do you how did you make the biography so or simple? I'm sorry, simplify yeah. the biography. I mean, we, I actually we were discussing this earlier today, and and you were talking more about like that you you know you wanted to get more at the what it was like for him as a boy, you know, creating. Um, but yes. no, I don't want to put words in your mouth though. What what were you thinking? Well, you know, I actually heard this because I was watching uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda yesterday talk. And he said the way he got into Hamilton was, was the immigrant experience, which is what he had experienced. So that's how he was able to find a way into that story because Hamilton was an immigrant. And I would say with, with a biography like Noguchi, he, he resonates a lot with it. He's, I think it's important, you know, he, he was half Jap Japanese, half American, Japanese dad, American mom, born in 1904 during the Japanese American War. So I'm sure there's like a lot of not understanding going on, you know, so he, so, and then like, I'm a, you know, so like when he's in America, he feels very isolated because he's not American enough. And same thing, his mom amazingly takes him to Japan when he's four, feels this, you know, and he has the same experience because he's not American enough. So he does retreat to try to find a, find a sense of home. Even like, um, I'm getting ahead of myself, but the garden scene at the end is Noguchi makes a lot of rock gardens, as we know, he's a land, beautiful landscapes. And the research I did, he did mention that this was his way of finding a home that belonged to him. And I can totally, so part of it was like, I found that his story is like, oh, there's a lot that I can relate to being the only family in Oklahoma. I mean, the only family in my small town that was Korean. You know, and it was, it, it, now, I, I want to make clear to everyone, I was a very popular kid. Okay. <laughs> I right. laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 no, no, but with all that, there's these moments of where you feel like an outsider. And, and, and that's, the, I was like, you know what, I can lean into, that's where I make the Noguchi story beautiful. And part of it's like, I'm, I'm only picking a section in Noguchi's life. You know, there's a, I don't want to spoil it for the Noguchi Museum because they, they have to ask me a super question, but I'll save that for them. But like, yeah, depending on the medium, maybe I pick a different part of his life to tell the story about, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think you take, I, um, taking a part of his life or figuring out what meant the most to you makes it that much more powerful than, um, yeah, you weren't just trying to like, oh, I gotta get this in, this in, this in. You're like, you went to the place that that it just resonated with yourself and then you gave it back. Well, 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 you know, the problem too is when I gave you guys that pitch, I think it's a pretty good pitch, right? <laughs> it was a very good pitch, but I didn't have anything. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I was gonna say, so uh, James, you read that pitch. I'm, lo I'm looking at it on my monitor yeah. here and I'm thinking, I don't really remember this pitch very well. Jim, do you remember this pitch? <laughs> You, you, didn't, you didn't see it. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you, maybe you did it over one of our lunches, uh, James, but yeah, anyway. With, with, with food and beer coming out of my mouth, like. Yeah, earlier, right. Well, you, so, mm -hmm. No, go ahead, please. So did you, I'm sorry, did you, did you then, did you show everyone um, the. Uh, oh, let's the, show that. Yeah. yeah, because what comes, uh, we should get to like, yeah, how, what, what, what keeps coming next. So I think this was next. Yeah. There's the pitch. Yeah, let me, and let me then, get it. And, and here's, yep. and this is why I, you need a lot of trust with your art director and editor, because this is the very first set of sketches, like, here's your book, guys. <laughs> you signed no, the contract. People, most, most people, I think that, that are already illustrators and work with uh, work with people like us know these are thumbnails, but they're basically really uh, small, rough sketches with a little few words in there. <laughs> so this is this is what I remember seeing first personally. Um, I mean, besides the um, those um, initial illustrations that you had that you had shown us, is is that J uh, Jim Durham? Is am I remembering correctly? Is this what you think you saw, we saw first? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and this is usually this first stage, something you see from, from the games. And, you know, depending on your publisher and your relationship with them, this, this is always such a great way 
for you to start your ideas and start getting things on paper. Um, and, and because we work so well so closely with each other, we're kind of able, like, like we, we know that what's going to come at the end is going to be this beautiful thing. So we can kind of just take this and just look at the content and not worry so much about, you know, we're not worrying about composition at this point. We're really just at, like ironing out this story, the pacing, the beats, you know, that, that, that sort of thing. Um, and, and I'm coming into it also like, when I do these thumbnails, I am thinking compositionally, but, and, I, and I'm not looking at it to be a perfect composition. I'm like, you know, is this part of a, is this a picture that I could eventually make work compositionally to tell a story? And if I can't, then I try to think of another thumbnail. And then as far as pacing, maybe I'm dwelling. I, I know that you guys will come in and help me sort out what's, you know, I'm old enough that where I feel like everybody has their blind spots and it's great to, as someone who can cover your blind spots for you, basically. Well, it's interesting to look at this with you guys because I'm thinking I well, how I look at it is different than how Jim looks at it because uh, I, you know, there's overlap, of course, but I'm looking at it thinking, okay, where's the story here? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, there, there yeah. is a story here, I think it is, or there is actually. Um, I think I shared this with um, the editorial director and and you know she's like great you know let's do it so um so it was, really? <laughs> well she's also a picture book editor so she, okay. she 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 could she was able to to see it as as well the potential um but um but i am you know as an editor i'm looking at the at the words and thinking okay we have some work to do um but so i'm curious james you're looking at this and and um actually there's a lot of this remain well not remain the same but what was this was very similar it's, so it's cl it's closer than i thought it's not that you know i mean like i'm surprised it was this close even to be honest with you mm -hmm. and i just for everyone to know like i i, I at the very end it's because if you're a song today was a very good day it's because i was listening to ice cube seriously that day that, that, that song of his about it being a very good day so, <laughs> but we we, I, we changed that because it's nice to have our own Words, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, there, there's actually there, so this is an early, early version of it. Very early. And there's one mm -hmm. spread here that at one point was two spreads, and at the very end, I was like, "Oh my God, we need to save a spread somewhere. Can we combine this?" And you had it combined here. We started off. Yes. Yeah. The stones, which look like birds, bamboo becomes music. That yeah, it's kind of. Oh. Sorry, I'm looking at my monitor because it's bigger over here. Um, I'm like, oh, he'd already done it, right, Jim? So, so I guess you started off with it as one spread. Somehow it became two as we went, and then we went back to it being one spread. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, and, so, something that's, and something to mention too is when I'm doing these sketches, I'm thinking that these are going to be full color illustrations, like, you know, when, when we when we came up with the idea, like maybe we should be use more white space and just go nuts with that. <laughs> you know, something's changed compositionally, you know, because it was a completely different thought process somewhere along the way. So I'm trying to, uh, this was in, an, oh, this, so I actually wrote it, wrote it down on my, on my copy here. Um, this, I, I believe you sent the, this um, to us in April or maybe March of 2019. Okay. Yes. Sounds yeah. about right. So, yeah, spring of 2019, and then I think we um, then signed it up based on this, um, and then um, I think we we got together and you know had lunch and discussed it, um, and then what was what came after this? I think you were um, you pro you probably went to uh, to a little bit more defined sketches. Is that right? Yes, let me go ahead and break those defined sketches out. Okay. And because probably also worked on the worked on the text a bit as well. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Maybe we'll just I'll just uh, sh should I make these full screen guys or well, it's maybe not necessary, right? Or what do you well, think? Well, go for it. It's more interesting than us. <laughs> okay. I remember like the interesting part was. I think I let off with this one and then you flop it later, remember? Mm -hmm. And then also on another note, you had me read 
you know, because you said like, oh, James, maybe you can try something a little bit more fluid, a little bit more organic. Oh, and another thing, I still haven't figured out how to draw hair yet. Yeah. Like there's, you know, and um, we can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> But, but, but yeah, you're but the, you're a bit hair challenged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in in the artistic and in the real world. But Obviously, you know, I am not. <laughs> show off. Nobody likes a bragger, Tracy. <laughs> um, but but you know what I do remember is like I did you know doing these little sketches, I just realized like wow it looks so it looks so it looks good already against white. Hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. And as we're getting refined to around this point, I'm saying, let me have this PDF and a, a Word document, and let me start playing around with the layout. And we're starting to talk about trim size. We have the pagination worked out at this point. And I, and I just go in there and start placing type and doing early thought process through like what typefaces I might use. Um, and, and we're just kind of starting to see exactly how something's going to hit, hit us on a spread. We're looking at the gutter, you know, where that, where that falls. Uh, just, just while we're here, this was, we, we you know, the three of us, it, it's great to, to work this way. We, we would get in a room together and just talk about things. And Tracy, I just remember you saying, what if this just had a shh across the spread? And I was like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think that that was before, right? This that you're seeing now. We, I think, we were probably looking at the um, thumbnails or whatever we had before this. And right. yeah, he had it. Actually, it was. I mean, I was taking it from from. Uh, I believe. No, you know what? I don't know. I I couldn't really find all of my notes on the on the text, but but the shh just seemed like you know needed what? to be I feel, there. I feel like you're the one that added the shh, though, and I was like. Mike look, and at Tracy, look at Tracy Mike. just breaking out the editing chops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. No, I, I thought, but I thought it was so beautiful. Like, if I could just brag about Tracy for a moment. I love the fact that, <laughs> okay, please no. Fact, no. No, but I love the fact that she'll just like add maybe a word or two and it makes the world a difference. Mm. You, you know, and especially with the what we work, I work pretty minimally with words, Joy. So, like, she can make a dip. It's amazing. And then I remember like this page, you, you asked me to rethink it because it really was sort of about, it really didn't take the story anywhere. I do remember that clearly. Yeah. It, it is amazing to see how you, you'll just change a few words and just something will just lock into place. It's pretty yeah. neat. Yeah. yeah. Well, a picture book is just so tight in some ways. You just, every little piece, you know, I don't know, you just, what you want, you want to really make sure it, Things and with and with Jim, I always trust him because like, if Jim were to tell me like, you know, James, this, is, this should be a little bit more horizontal, or like, like like I know that you and Tracy will discuss, but if you think the format should be different to tell the story better, I'm totally willing to change adjust my compositions. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you may see the story compositionally told better that I don't see, and that's a case where I trust you guys more. I think for the final format and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, um, once we got into, um, I think um, at every stage, really, we had a lot of, we had a lot of back and forth. I think once we really got going, because I was looking at my, I think once the pandemic started, especially, really, we, uh, we just, it just seemed like there were a lot, you, James would send us a, um, a piece of work he was, uh, artwork that he was working on, and we would both chime in um as well as with you know your how you were um uh you know each each piece and, and structuring it and so forth and i think some and sometimes you know i would send you back a pdf with, with a few little you know word suggestion changes so. for jim there's a lot of compliments on the typeface i'm just asking what font did you use or how did you choose the font <laughs> um, I don't remember the name of the font offhand. I know it's is it in is it in the book? In the book. Yeah, I I actually this was one this was a book that usually I I'll just sit with it in, in this tight sketch stage 
fonts, man. Kind of go through a bunch of fonts that I think might work, but you never really know until the final art comes in. And with this one, I, it was kind of the first one that I put into place. And I was like, it can't, it can't be Abdi, A-B-A-D-I. Um, and the, the display on the cover is uh, La Haver Ruff, La Havre Ruff. Um, but so with, with, with James's work, because his work is so spare and clean, I always try to look for very spare, clean typefaces. And with your line weight, I try to get something that kind of mimics that to an extent. So I usually go into a design kind of with a rough idea of what I think I want. And then in this case, it really, it just landed right away. In fact, I think I was doing a font search for another book and found the main display and stopped what I was doing, opened James's book up and, and took your early, those early images that you had done, copped them into place and sent me the PDF like, eh, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Um, so, uh, um, but, but often with a picture book, I'm changing it up until the last minute, up until art comes in, um, you know, uh, I, I always, I, I always like when an artist pushes back and like, can you try something else? So sometimes it's like, okay, that's great. I'm like, should I keep trying? Yeah, but but this one, it really, it, it was, like I said, it was the first one I, I tried. We liked it. I tried some others, nothing worked as well. I think James, I sent you one other one a little bit down the road. I'm like, no, it just doesn't work as well. It's, yeah, right, I, I remember that. It, 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 as the art was coming in, I, I, I keep telling James, it felt like, he was handing me this perfectly balanced platter on top of a pencil point, and I had to just take the type and just <laughs> very gently, ginger, gingerly, just place it and hold my breath and, and step back because everything is balanced so perfectly. Somebody asked a question about like a, that there was a lot in a book that spoke to this one person who has autism, and what steps did we take to make the story so relatable, or was it natural? I'm sorry I'm going off track here, but, but a little, just, I, I think on our part is like any great children's book, even if you're telling somebody's story, you're trying to find that part that's really a common experience for more than just one group, you know, and lonely, I, you know, solitude as a child can mean so many different things. And, and that was really what I was hoping to do, maybe, maybe sort of with a little bit of Asian spice, but it's really about the experience of a lot of people, I, I think. I, I, one of the things I love doing in, in a picture book is to watch for the secondary themes or storylines to emerge from within the story or start to think of or see how librarians will use it, you know, that something that something could end up being about bravery or, you know, feeling empowered or lifted up. Like, so it's really neat. To, it's, it's just so special to see that happen and emerge in the book. But you're always sort of, Tracy, why don't you always look, because sometimes maybe you'll look at one of my stories and feel like it needs something. You know, I mean, I've had some stories that like died that will never come back to life. But uh, like, what, what kind of thing, what, and I know that you're looking for it in almost like an intangible quality, I feel like, sometimes when you look at stories. Like, yeah, this could be a book or maybe not. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think, Jim put it really well there that you, you know, all, I think ideally, I mean, every book is different. Obviously, Isamu is very different than Appa and Bus Stop, you know, and they two do very different things. Um, but especially with Isamu, you, a kind of book like that, you, you don't, you want it to, um, you know, be multi layered, you know, and, 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 be different things for different people, you know, and I think it really, um, or at least I hope it does, you know, achieves that as well as be um, accessible to to many people um, and different ages, different needs. Um, I, I, see, I don't know. I see somebody here also asked a question. How did we decide on what, how did we decide the length of the book? Because she said she just read it to her forty year. 40 year old. She read for a five year old. <laughs> and and um, she said it was a perfect length. How did we, but, but maybe you guys can talk more about like how the length of books are described because that is always the very first thing you guys tell me is like, James, this is like a 32 or 40 page story. 
Jim, you want to talk about the length of picture books? I, I feel like, especially with, with you, Tracy, we'll, we'll like something will come in, like the, the PDF, the you know the the early version, and we'll look at it and we'll, we'll kind of go through it, and form our initial thoughts, and then we'll be talking. We're like, oh, let's count the pages, and we'll like. <laughs> we did that today. <laughs> hey, what what are we gonna do? Okay, too long to be thirty-two pages. It'll be forty. So much of our job, we're just winging it. We're just totally we're we're building on experience. That we've got but you know we're just kind of in that moment yet you know so it, it it's not always as scientific as you know it, it's kind of informed by i guess what the story needs needs to be and um it, you know often I, I i would rather be i would i would rather have to fill out a spread than take a spread away like like but they're both interesting challenges to to do so um you know having something be self-ended can kind of give you a little bit more breathing room with a title spread, you know, an extra page in the back. So it, it, it really is just kind of in, intuitive as to what, what you think your story needs to be and, and how, how it you know, best. Yeah, because Jim, somebody did ask, um, is there an example of something that had to be cut or changed specifically with this book? Um, did you have to make that decision to, to change something? Kind of like James, well, the drawings that James was showing earlier. Um, were there any- Jim, you want- mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I was, Jim, I was gonna, maybe Jim, you wanna clarify um, that uh, uh, experience that you had waking up in the middle of the night or whatever it was yeah. realizing. Yeah. Um, that that maybe we that well not maybe that we really should cut a spread. So you want to talk about that? That's that was interesting. Sure. Yeah. So uh, so so basically just just, just to, to kind of uh, uh, you know we'll, we'll we'll circle back to the part when art starts coming in. But um, you know we ended up doing this this book a little early during the pandemic, and the art was basically done by early summer. We needed to go to the printer by like late September, early October. And I do this a lot. I was, I was on vacation laying there one night. I wasn't able to sleep. And I thought, you know what? We have this book paginated out that the copyright page is on the back end paper. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Maybe we really need to go in there and cut a spread somewhere. And the moment I came home from that vacation, it was like nine o'clock at night. And I put my kid to bed and I was sitting there looking for a spread that we could maybe combine so that I could go back to James and, and Tracy and say, I think we need to do this. And this and there was only one spot that I saw that, that we we could we could do it. And and and, and I remember just, just thinking, you know, these two spreads, which in the original uh, you know one of the, I, can, I can even show you them the original one that we had to cut down. Should I do that? And, and, I, and I think by the next morning, you'd be like, yeah, that sounds good. And you had already done it. And Tracy, meanwhile, is waking up to this email from her <laughs> art director. And James like, yep, yeah, there you go. Because this is the original spread right here, guys. Yeah. Everybody yeah. can see it. Yeah. I, I remember when you said that, though, I had a heart attack. Because I was like, I was like, holy poop snacks. Jim is right. We can't do this. We're like, we can't be rebels. You know, we're like defying the forces of nature. So, but then, yeah, but, then, but, then, but then I got to do wallpaper too because of that. Yeah, I, I think too, this this came into my head in the middle of the night because a week or so earlier, we had done the uh, a panel together, the three of us um, with the uh, the Geisel committee. And I remember one of the, 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 the judges of, of that, uh, had said that they have like this list of criteria that they they will go through and eliminate a book's eligibility based on if it doesn't have this. And I was like, what if pagination is one of them? What if having a copyright page on the end paper is one of them? So let's go rethink that so that it's all that it's all like contained within the actual book and not have any informational, you know, any information on the, the end papers them, themselves. So that's that's where that panic thought came from. <laughs> you know, I, I see some questions here. Let me just answer them super quick. Uh, yes, Isamu was an only child. And then uh, somebody asked me about the question, like at the paper lantern. Um, 
some of the book, some of my writing is based upon quotes from Noguchi. Like, uh, so I think he did have something about the quality of life. And some of the quotes you see throughout the book are based upon things that Gucci said. And I, yes, I do know that he had a lonely childhood. It, 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 there's not much known about it, but a couple things I know is that he had an awesome head of hair. So I had to learn to draw hair. And um, that he did have a lonely childhood. And I think somebody asked like, uh, maybe you could, you know what, Tracy, you can answer this one. This looks like an editor question. The illustrations are joyful and the subject matter is about loneliness. At what point, and who decides the ultimate message married with the visual direction and where a hard emotion like a no, um, loneliness is made joyful? I think they're, I kind sort of, ask, they're sort of asking like, we, we kind of talk about loneliness, but then the illustrations are very sort of happy illustrations. How did we make that, how did we strike that balance? I think is what the question is. Mm. Well, you were really the one that did it. <laughs> yeah. um, but but I don't, I think the the, while there is certainly a lot of joy in the in the illustrations, there there also there's a there's a real thoughtfulness to them as well. I mean, it's it, what I what I love about this book is that it's it's like it celebrates this you know like being by oneself and the quiet and what can, one can discover by being by oneself and quiet but yet at the same time there's so much also energy and like and discovery and 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 also your work just like your illustrations aren't like you know uh True. muted at all so um i don't know it, it just seems like and and the and the text too I, it's not right in front of me at this moment but but i feel like it's it's quiet but also you know, I rewrote I rewrote this one a lot, and probably even when you said something was okay, I'd sometimes even send you a rewrite, which is something I don't normally do. And mm. I do I do remember thinking like, yes, I want to be vulnerable. This is the first book I felt like was a my an emotionally vulnerable book, mm -hmm. you know. But and and I do remember like he sort of helped me strike the right balance. Like you would let me know if I was getting a little bit too dark, and I don't think I got that dark. It was just like a note that you gave me. Like, well, I think. You, you, you know, you want to catch this element of loneliness, but you don't want to say like, I'm alone and want to die. Like, like maybe that's too far. <laughs> maybe, that'll, you, you, maybe that's you never not the did, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, yeah, I can't remember any, you know, specifics about that, oh. but I do remember we, yeah, there, we did want to make sure it was a, the, the right tone there. Oh, that, oh, oh, oh. And, and, and like someone from the Gucci Museum told us, actually he had, Osamo did have a number of half siblings, you know, on both sides of his, because his parents split, but that as a very young child, yes, he was lonely. Mm -hmm. So that's good information to have corrected. Yeah. Um, that, you know, if you're going to give a child a book about, you know, feeling lonely or isolated, you want it to be empowering. For them you want it you know you want it to ultimately the experience of it to be uplifting and, and you know have it be empowering for that that child so i you know i i think it really does hit that uh uh that all really really nicely well you know what's interesting about creative people too is like i remember like talking with a bunch of illustrators about our childhoods and a lot of them were talk would talk about either like how they were alone a lot or bored because there was nothing to do and my wife, she's a choreographer and a performer. And her story that she had was like, her dad would take her to this factory because he was an accountant there. It's a plastics factory where they made flowers. And he'd be stuck there all, she'd be stuck there all day to amuse herself, you know, just to be with her own devices for the whole day while dad was doing work. And then she would just sort of imagine she was going through a, a forest. And I'm pretty sure that was like the seeds of how she later became a choreographer. I also wanted to say before that I would never have asked James to redo two spreads that late after I had already completing final art if you painted traditionally. Like, I, because you work digitally and fast, I knew that, and, and you, I also knew that you'd be free to be like, nah, I think it's fine, it is, you know, as is. Um, and, and then when you changed it so quickly, and I was like, that's exactly what I meant. Hey, Tracy, what do you think? And I was like, <laughs> Now Tracy has the option to veto this, you know, this, this, this thing. So, um, 
you know, so so mostly as you're working with art directors, uh, you know, we're all hoping to not ever have to ask you to change final art in any big meaningful way, you know, in that in that way. But this is a case too where I think we a there's a pandemic going on. B we need this. I think we all felt like this book has potential to be really a really good book, if nothing else. And we didn't want to mess it up. And and three, I feel like we all trust each other a lot. Yeah. Are there any other questions that that we could well, answer? I was going to say for um, people listening or watching that aren't as familiar with your work, James, there have been a few questions about, is this digital, is this collage? If you just want to like say a few words about your uh, artistic process. Oh, sure. Um, yes, yes, all my work is digital. And, and I do use a, a lot of the subtle textures you see are uh, paper textures that I that I scan in and use as masks, and they're part of my library. But when I sketch, I'm I'm sort of an old-fashioned guy. I like to sketch sketch on tracing paper, and then I'll I will scan those in and use those as a template to build my illustrations. And I do my illustrations in Illustrator, and some of, and some of the brushes I use are custom brushes that, that I've had for like over thirty years, and. Um, a couple I used were Kyle's brushes and Kyle Webster, he's actually a friend of mine. So uh, that makes it even more special sometimes that I can even use his brush. I'll even ask like, hey, Kyle, you got a brush for this effect? <laughs> and, and then he'll point me in the right way. So um, that, that, that's sort of how I do my work. Somebody asked if I have a sketchbook and I'm not really a sketchbook guy, but if, you, if I did, like literally the first thumbnail sketches that you saw that Jim and Tracy had to look at, that, 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 that is how I, I do sketches. And for me, I'm more of a sponge guy. I like, to, I like to go to places. I just like to go do things and then come home and sort of download it into whatever I'm doing. I, I've tried to be the sketch person and it's just, everybody else has so much nicer sketchbooks than me. I just, it, it actually makes me angry. <laughs> I feel bad about myself. <laughs> um, yeah, I did ask, you know, people just to submit a few last questions. Um, and somebody asks, how many rewrites and dummies um, did you go through? And did you need to ask permission uh, to write this story? Um, well, 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 you know, I uh, know we did not because it's a fictional story. Mm -hmm. And how many rewrites did we do, Tracy? We, we, not really that, we kind of did more like versions of it, not necessarily a whole full-blown rewrite. Yeah, and it, and you know, when one is working with, um, I mean, everyone works differently. Is that is what I was trying to say? But, um, but with you, James, I think you work very. You're, uh, you're showing us your either your thumbnails or your sketches uh, or final work. You know, I was, I was looking through that earlier today, and and then you've got the text there, and I'm often kind of. Like what about this or what about that? Um, so I yeah in this in this case um, it wasn't it wasn't like draft number you know four or five or six it's you know because truth Tracy will or Jim will usually say like well maybe we need to rethink this spread and page mm -hmm. you know or maybe something I remember like in that one beach scene it was like there's not literally nothing was going on there think of something to connect this spread to the following spread that moves the story along. Mm. Oh, oh, you know, you, you know, like I'll get notes like that. And then what helped too was um, during the writing of Noguchi, my wife had me go join a workshop in Hong Kong. So I was on a plane for 18 hours going to Hong Kong back then, had an eight hour workshop to go to. And it was about write, theater, uh, writing stories or theater or movies. and. And David Glass, who taught it, he kept me engaged for the whole eight hours, even though I was jet lagged about story lighting. And, and the thing he taught me was, which I brought, it was, it was my first time to try it was with this Noguchi book, was like, you always want people to know what's next. And he, he meant like, what's next is like, think of every section that's a box where something happens. And then when they open it, they want to know what's in the next box. And I was like, oh, I can apply that to this. And, I, and, and that helped me a lot too, I think, hmm. with the writing of the story, just the whole, yeah, what? Why should that person care to turn the page? You know, so I, I think, yeah, yeah, I'm actually like learning some proper tools. It was like, oh, that's why they have these writing workshops. They really help with 
writing, yeah. I also liked, because um, I don't think you said it yet in this space, uh, James, what, what did the guy from, um, or the writer or the editor from Golf Digest tell oh, you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, like uh, when I was at the when I was at the Masters, he he knew that I was writing a children's story. We're we're walking around the grounds, this beautiful classic course, and he goes, "So you're a children's book writer?" And I'm too. I like to know about that because he's young. He's a younger editor who has kids, and I was like, "Oh, I just I go actually like I'm doing a book called about Osama Noguchi, and uh, I t and, I'm, and I told my publishers that it's a masterpiece. It's going to be a masterpiece." He goes, "Oh, really?" <laughs> Give me the pitch, big boy. So I gave him the pitch, and, and you know, and he actually did get teary eyed. And he goes, "That's beautiful." And I go, "Yeah, but I'm kind of freaked out." And he goes, "Why?" And I go, "Well, I told him it was going to be like this awesome book, but I, I don't have anything yet. I just told him that." And then he goes, "Well, you know, James, editors like it when you underpromise and overdeliver. You got it all back." <laughs> so, so that was the thing. And I think that's why it took so long too. It was like. I was kind of nervous because I felt like this, I didn't want to mess up what I thought was a golden chance that you, that um, Viking was giving me to do a book like this also. You know? Well, I, I also liked, what, what was the advice? I don't know if it was that thing. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, it was a different editor. He, he said that he likes, to, he likes to write a manuscript and take half the words out, mm -hmm. you know, his first draft. And the reason why is because it adds a sense of immediacy. It, it forces him to make the story more immediate. Mm -hmm. And even like the reason why we made a second person was, well, first you, you, you had me read the book, The Iridescence of Birds by Hadley Cooper, is that right? Hadley. The illustrator, I think it was Patricia McLaughlin was the- McLaughlin, Patricia McLaughlin, yeah. Yeah, yeah and you had me read that. You know, so cause like, I realized it was like, I wanted to feel immediate like you were there. Not like I'm putting you in the past tense. And fortunately it worked out, that was the goal. I'm, I'm very happy people liked the way it worked out, but I really, yeah, yeah, I, I was very aware of that sort of like wanting you to be right there at the moment, mm -hmm. uh, verbally as well as visually. Someone on Twitter yesterday tweeted, creative writing is 5% creativity and 95% editing the word just out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of true. <laughs> Probably more Somebody Somebody's asking what key lessons or points did I did we learn during the making of this book? Um, I learned to be more emotionally open, I think. You know, because like when you, when, when I'm doing a book like Stop Bot or Bus Stop, it, you know, when you're being funny, you're not really being. I guess you can be open, but there's a little bit of distance there. You, you know, this one I didn't have the device of being funny to rely on. So, but then it was it was very rewarding. I learned about that, and I do think since I'm older, I wasn't. You know what? I wanted, I wanted to really respect what I learned about Isamu, and, and one of my goals, and it wasn't like as a tangible goal, but it was more like if I could get the Noguchi Museum to like it, that means I did my homework and I did understand what Isamu was about. So I was very, you know, it wasn't, it was less about me, and more about like I want something to connect. To, I'm learning to sort of be more concerned about like, you know, what it could be for other people, for like any lack of better phrase words like, like those seem to be the more satisfying questions like i'm not trying to show off and be witty or show you how great i draw or whatever that's a big lesson I learned. The, the yeah, other... I, mm -hmm. go ahead jim oh i was going to say that that you know we we were working on the art for this book you, you were working on the art for this book james right at the beginning of the pandemic and i think we were all and, and the way we work together James will send me a spread as he's doing it, which I, I love. And I love that you trust me with that. So I can just kind of put something in the layout and like just start to see how it's gonna to come together. And I, and I just, it, it was just this lifeline of something good and decent and normal. And then we would talk, we would, we would, I would like call you up and you'd call me like, what do you think of the spread? And we would spend a few minutes talking about it. And then we would spend the, the next hour like, what the heck's going on? Like, <laughs> So it, it, it was a good memory for me in a sea of bad memories, you know, of just the beginning of the pandemic and yeah. Yeah, I was looking at emails too between, you know, us at the, and it was, you no, know, we had, the three of us had lunch in late February of just 2020. Before. 
exactly like a week or so before we all maybe two weeks before we left the office and 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 I will say this you guys were the first uh you know colleagues I guess that I saw you know not we all got back together again uh was it May of this yeah, year yeah. and um so that I don't know it just <laughs> no pun intended but book ended <laughs> a really uh, a real challenging time but yeah these guys kind of I think we all kind of saved and helped each other out a lot at the, at the beginning of this tough time so it was just so lovely to see you know to see your work coming in and and it being such a you know, meaningful book. And um, it was more than a distraction. It just, it just kind of was heart filling as well. It is a, it's not often that I, I, I like all my books. That's the problem. But um, <laughs> I could be more, it wouldn't hurt to be a little self-critical. No, no, but like, I really feel like that this book was a chance to like, maybe try something special that, you know, you dream about doing, creating something that's like your, your thing. That's really special, and, and I knew that this was the chance. And, and then I'm, I'm just very happy that it, it actually turned out how you dream. Because a lot of times you have a project that you dream about, and then you see really reality hit, like maybe I'm not quite good enough to execute it, or whatever, or corporate says no, <laughs> whatever, you, you know. And all those things can kind of like whittle down what the dream is. But this was a case where none of that happened, and it was actually like, whoa, I can actually, you know, like. We're, we're all trying to hit a home run here. And it was so nice to work, have a chance that, and I, and I knew that Viking was pretty supportive, also supportive too. I never felt like constrained in any way. So that, that was a big, meal, big deal to actually have permission to try to go for it, I thought. Definitely. Any, anything else that no I can uh, answer between? <laughs> I'm gonna say that I think that's like a really great note to end the talk on. I was actually just quickly trying to put the link to purchase the book um, in the chat if anyone was interested. Um, but I just wanted to say that we're so grateful for your time and for sharing, you know, everything about the book with us. Really insightful. So many great compliments about the book, about the writing. Um, really awesome. So like I said, I put the link to the book in the chat. And James, I don't know if you want to let people know about what you're doing tomorrow night, if people want to sure. have a little um, bit more. Yeah, yeah. Um, tomorrow I'll be talking on Instagram live with the Noguchi Museum. Uh, so, so at six o'clock, it'll be a, 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 an interview with their media coordinator, uh, Justin Baez. And uh, He's a very smart kid with very good questions. And we'll probably go more into like, we'll, we'll do a deep dive into maybe like some of the Noguchi influences because believe this or not, the, the people at Noguchi Museum know so much about Noguchi. They literally found all the Easter eggs, <laughs> you know, in the book. And then, um, and then also just talk about like how, you know, people who do not, who do not feel like they totally fit in, like how this book resonates with a lot of people in that way too. So I think it'll be a very interesting talk also. So that's coming out tomorrow. And then July 10th for the Noguchi Museum again, I'll be doing a reading of the book. And I think the kids will be doing an art, art um, some, some art crafts together. It'll be an online thing at 10 o'clock in the morning, but you can check out, you can check there. And then books, I think the book's in a lot of places. So please, please check it out. Uh, I hope you like it as much as we do. <laughs> Yeah, Amelia just put um, a link to that event in the chat and I put a link to the Instagram so you can just go there tomorrow night if you want to learn a little bit more about the book and I just want to thank you all again and um, can't wait to see you in person. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's great to see everybody again and it's time for Viking to take me out for more snacks. <laughs> With pleasure. <laughs> Uh, were, were, are they the same as the foundation? I just, I did wanted to say the foundation was really, really helpful in like helping us navigate. Absolutely. All the photos and stuff. They, they've just been pretty awesome, I, I think, through this whole experience. So, yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, thanks again. And hopefully, this will be up on YouTube in the near future. And we'll be posting about it on Instagram once that happens. And we just hope everyone has a really great night. And thank you again.
Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.